Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you some of Istanbul's hidden photo spots so you can get pictures and angles of places and sites that nobody else is. So Istanbul is a very photographic city. It's very easy to take pictures here and it's very Instagrammable. But that also means that it's very easy to take the same picture as everyone else. Now I've lived and walked all over this city so many times that I have found a lot of little perfect spots where you can get pictures and angles that you wouldn't find otherwise. So today I want to show you some of those spots and show you the kind of pictures that you can get. It's very early in the day and the sun is kind of high up already so the light right now isn't very good but these spots are excellent and you would not find them otherwise. <laughs> My first spot is actually my favorite. This one is right by Kabataj port. So it's right by where the ferries dock and it is high up. It's near the tram, so if you come up the Kabataj station, so you're gonna walk up some stairs, walk up some other stairs, and there you're gonna find a small little parking lot. Now as you walk up that street, you're gonna find some cars that are parked very, very precisely just along the edge of this cliff here. And then as you walk all the way up, you're gonna find the actual park and then you're gonna walk onto this rooftop. So during the winter when the trees don't have any leaves on them, you get more angles. But if you're here in summer or when the trees have leaves on them, you're gonna walk up and then walk over to this rooftop where I'm on right now and then get all the way over into this little corner area. And when you do that, you're gonna get these amazing views of the Bosphorus, you're gonna get amazing views of the ferries. But if you turn around here, you're gonna get excellent views of the Bosphorus Bridge. Now, this bridge is best seen at night when it's all lit up and then you get the light coming off of all the ferries and the shops off the water. Right now, it's not the best time to photograph this place, but I wanted to show you sort of early in the day while I make my way through all the other sites. But this site is absolutely excellent because the bridge lights up at night and it is beautiful. And this is an angle that you're not gonna find from a bunch of places in the city. And this is very close to Taksim Square. So you can actually walk down here from Taksim Square. It's gonna be about a 10, maybe 15 minute walk. And the nice thing is when you're coming from Taksim, you're actually walking downhill and not uphill. If you're coming from the tram station or Besiktas or somewhere else, you're gonna have to walk up these hills. But again, it's not that hard of a walk. It's like a five minute walk uphill and then you get this excellent view all to yourself. So now that we've got this first spot, I wanna show you some of the others. I'm gonna label all of these on a map. So this is kind of a long sort of walking slash ferry tour that you can take. And it's a beautiful day if you actually do this entire route where you can pick and choose the places that you wanna see. But now that we've gotten our pictures of the bridge, we've gotten our pictures of the Bosphorus just behind. We're gonna go on to the next spot and get a little bit closer to the water to get a couple of other angles where others might not be taking them. So as I make my way down the hill here, let me give you an idea of how you could structure this one day photo tour of Istanbul from some of the sites that not a lot of people are gonna get to see and not a lot of angles. I would start this early in the morning. If you could get here close to sunrise, you can see the sun is right behind me. That's east over there. The sun is gonna rise over the Bosphorus Bridge, over the Bosphorus. You're gonna get amazing photos. If you can get here right at sunrise, because then as you go down to the water, it's gonna be a little bit sort of still as that golden hour ends the sun is still going to be pretty low in the sky there are hills which block the sun you're going to get great photos of the water down there and then we're going to move on so this whole route is going to be really nice structured with a nice breakfast slash early lunch there in the middle and then we'll finally make our way all the way up to the other side of the Bosphorus. all right so the next one is actually five minutes walking just downhill to get here and like I said you get these beautiful views of the Bosphorus and the Bosphorus Bridge it's near what's called the Yaya Yolo which is the basically the pedestrian road that goes behind some construction that's happening here near Domabacha Palace near Domabacha Mosque which is right there and if you come right down here especially early when there aren't a lot of boats covering up you get just amazing amazing views both of the water and also of the bridge right behind you and then if you step out just a little bit watch your step notice that back there is Domabacha Palace as well so you can get some great photos of it with the bridge in the background and if you get the right angle through these uh, through this little fence here you can get the mosque 
the palace as well as the bridge. So great shot, great place to get photos. All right, so to get to the next spot, we're gonna walk south along the Bosphorus just a little bit. There are gonna be plenty of views along the way, so if you're making this route yourself, just know that you can stop and get lots of good pictures, lots of creative sights and angles on your own, and then we're gonna go and end up at the next spot. So Galata Tower is pretty iconic in Istanbul and most people take pictures of it by going right up to it and taking pictures shooting up. Now that can be great, you'll get a lot of good photos that way, but it can be very crowded so you'll have lots of people in your pictures. But what I really like about this angle down in Nejati Bay by that street here, I'll uh, link to that on the map. What I really like about this angle is that you can actually get to see how tall the tower is and how high up the hill it's on actually is when you compare it to the surrounding areas in the city. It really gives you an idea of perspective and you can walk up these little streets right next to it and get all kinds of angles where there will be nobody in front of you. Those streets are mostly clear, especially earlier in the day before about 11 a.m. when it starts to get more crowded. But you can get lots of great pictures from here and it is an absolutely beautiful shot. And if you've got a longer lens, there are seagulls just swirling around the top, usually around early morning to the late evening. And you'll get great photos and videos of them up there. So I really like this angle. I like shooting the Galata Tower down from the hills below, walking up in some of the side streets there to get some of your photos. It's about 10 in the morning, so that means east is that way. And the sun is going to set right back there. So this is another great place to get Instagrammable or great photo shots of the Galata Tower at sunset because the sun is going to set right back there and you'll get some great shots at golden hour all right so now that i've shown you that let's head over to the other side of the bosphorus the other side of istanbul the asian side and show you a couple of other sites and get a little bit of food to eat all right so since it was on the way i decided to stop by karaoke gudrolu which is probably the most famous place for baklava in the city and maybe one of the most famous for baklava in the country they have breakfast they have berek in breakfast which is a pastry that's stuffed with spinach or meat or cheese it's pretty early in the morning but i decided i couldn't resist as i was passing by to take a try of the baklava the baklava here is made fresh there's so many different varieties and this one is the vegan pistachio you can see it there oh it just when you cut into it, it's just so soft but crispy and it just cuts right through. Baklava is like an art here basically. So a couple of things that they tell you that you should be able to cut through this with a knife easily. It should just go straight through. There's not a lot of flaking on the sides. And then the syrup there should be consistent. So it should be consistent on the bottom, not dripping. Also light throughout the top. But again, consistency throughout. So you get more of it in the bottom and the thicker layers. But as you get up here, just a perfect amount. It's really, truly an art here. It's really good. So you can get a half portion or full portion. One portion is basically four small pieces of baklava, which is really like two full pieces of baklava. You can think of it like that. And then you go up to the counter, tell them what you want after you've looked around and decided what kind of baklava you want to try you can also mix and match then you pay they give you a receipt after you get your receipt then you go back to the counter they'll give you your baklava and tea or whatever you ordered and you can find a seat and enjoy now in previous videos and things i've written people said they don't make vegan baklava there you can't have vegan baklava but it says vegan on the side this is the vegan version I'm just telling you, they do have it. Proof right there. It's made fresh actually just down the street at the kitchen. It's made fresh daily and then a lot of it actually goes out to a lot of other stores and goes out overseas. It's packaged and the rest of it is brought here fresh daily. So it's phyllo dough on top, then you have crushed pistachio there, and then more dough on the bottom with syrup. So all of that is placed in the oven and then cooked until it's just crispy, just slightly, slightly brown, and then it's ready to eat. You're gonna come here to the Karaoke Ferry Stop. You're gonna come here, get a metro ticket, scan yourself in, and then we're gonna go to the other side to the last photo spot in Uskudak. 
ferry as it takes off. You also get some really good views of the Golden Horn. You can see Hagia Sophia there, you can see Topkapi Palace, and you can see all the ferries going across. It's actually a very, very beautiful, unobstructed view as you head over to Skidar. It's amazing to me how many people come to Istanbul and don't ever get on one of the ferries. It's one of the best ways to see the city. It's inexpensive. There are so many different routes that you can try and get to another part of the city to explore for a day or a half day and then hop on one and get right back to where you started. Also, the views are fantastic. I mean, the photographic opportunities are incredible and there's just so much to see when you're on the ferries. Alright, so here we are at Iskidar and what I like about this stop, especially in this area, is it's so much calmer and less frequented by tourists than other places in the city. You want your fishermen, you've got plenty of fishermen to take photos of, you've got the coast, you've got the other side, and you can see the Galata Tower from here. So we've been pretty far, just in a couple of hours here. We've done a nice little tour starting all the way up there, going down to the tower, getting some baklava, taking the ferry across, and now here we are in this nice open park space. You can take photos, you can sit, you can eat, you can relax a little bit. But if you walk down from here just a little bit, we can go to our final photo destination. And you also get great views of the bridge. Remember, we were all the way on the other side to get those views of the bridge in the city from high up. From Iskudar now we are a lot closer and you get really nice photos from here. It is a really excellent spot to take pictures from. Alright, so here we go, the last stop on our photo tour of Istanbul. Our little secret spots, Instagrammable spots that you might not have known about. And this one is right next to the Maiden's Tower. Now it's under construction right now, unfortunately it's being restored. But hopefully by the time you get here, they've taken the scaffolding off and you can see it without any obstruction. Now, right now it's about noon, but honestly the best time to get here is sunset because the sun sets right across there. So the sun is there, it's gonna set over that way and it's gonna get this nice golden color with the blues and the greens of the water and it just looks absolutely beautiful with the silhouette of the skyline behind. So make sure you time it around sunset so you can get the absolute best photos here. So there you go, there's a little photo tour with some baklava on the way that you can take on your own or with your friends and make your own little photographic Instagram story of Istanbul. You'll have your own spots, your own shots, things that not a lot of other people will have and now you know the best times to get to which places. Let me know though if you have any questions about where these places are, how to get here or anything else about your time in Istanbul. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions and while you're down there hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week and I'll see you in the next video. Countless times in all kinds of nooks and crowd. Now